Hello, brothers and sisters. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you, wherever you may be. May the Lord be with you, guiding you, influencing you with his Holy Spirit and protecting you with his holy angels. I pray also for your family, for your marriage here, that the Lord may be with each one in your family. Today we are here to continue this series, Seven Keys to a Happy Marriage. I hope by God's grace you have been practicing some of the lessons we have learned here and it may have been a blessing for your marriage. And today we are going to close this series. That's the seventh topic. And we are going to be talking about how to place God at the center. How to place God at the center of your marriage. And I pray that the Lord may be with us, lead us here with his Holy Spirit. It's a blessing to be here with you all. And I know some of you have been praying for me and I appreciate your prayers. I have been traveling to different places and I can feel that uh, some of you, brethren, are praying for me. So thank you very much for your prayers, for your for always remembering me and my family in your prayers. And I ask you to please continue praying for us. And uh, so, as I mentioned, today is the seventh topic. And the topic for today is how to place God at the center. How to place Him at the center of your marriage. So we are going to be talking first here uh, about uh, the importance of having God at the center of our marriage. And then we will talk about how to place Him at the center of our marriage. And I pray once again that you may enjoy these moments we are going to be spending together here. And that when we finish this meeting here, we may finish with the assurance that we met Jesus Christ in these moments of prayer here. So, uh, in my ministry, I have had the privilege of performing a good number of weddings. And I like to marry people. Because as I am happy in my marriage, I believe that people can be happy in their marriage as well. And actually, I do believe that a person that has a marriage where God is the center of the marriage, the, these two people that got together, they will be happier than they were before. I'm not saying here that people should get uh, get married married to be happy. No, but people that are happy, they should get married and they'll be even happier when God is the center of their marriage. And uh, as I mentioned, I have had this privilege of performing a good number of weddings. And I always try to counsel the couples, uh, some of these couples that are about to marry, uh, to marry they live far away, they invite me for the wedding. Sometimes I don't have the time to be counseling them uh, as preparation for the wedding. So the local pastor does that. And uh, sometimes I arrive there one day before the wedding, but I still have one moment of counseling with the couple. I always ha have this moment with them. Uh, sometimes uh, it's in the day I arrive, one day before the wedding ceremony. Sometimes it is in the day of the wedding ceremony. I have this moment of counseling and I'll tell you, this moment sometimes is a little bit awkward in this moment of advising, uh, that of counseling, that I'm counseling them. Because then these two young people are there, I call them and I talk to them a little bit and I give them one advice. And the advice I give them is that they should pray together and ask God's presence before they have their first moment of marital intimacy. So I tell them, you know, you are going to your honeymoon. When you're going to have this first moment of intimacy, uh, marital intimacy, uh, pray to God and ask him to be present with you in those moments there. Then they look at each other awkwardly and I can uh, see that they are saying, you know, uh, but we are going to have... Um, relationship, marital intimacy here, and we are going to invite God to be present in this moment with us. They feel it a little bit awkward, and they sometimes they look at each other, they smile, and I use this moment to explain to them the importance of making God the center of our marriage. And because the Bible tells us that except the Lord build the house, they that labor, they labor in vain to build it. It's there in Psalm 127, verse 1. So it's a, uh, if we want to have a solid marriage, it's, it's important to understand that God should be there with us in all the moments of our marriage. Something we will be missing, even the most, uh, uh, the, the, the happiest moments of our lives if God is not present. So our marriage will be incomplete if God is not the center of it. 
So even when we are going to have the, our marital relationship, we should invite God to be present with us and to bless those moments that we are going to have with each other. And uh, because if something is missing in a marriage, that means that God is not being the center of it. He's not present in all the moments of this marriage. And the contagious will be tempted to look for a solution outside of it. And that's the plan of the enemy, is to remove God from the center of marriage, and then he'll take advantage to separate the couple. And I found a very interesting text on this, from the Spirit of Prophecy on councils on stewardship, page 136, that says that Satan, he has only one satisfaction when he's playing with the game of life of, with the souls of men. And you know what is the satisfaction of the enemy, of the devil? is to hurt, uh, hurt Christ. And uh, it says there, I'm going to read the text for us here. It says, the only satisfaction uh, Satan takes in playing the game of life for the souls of men is the satisfaction he takes in hurting the heart of Jesus Christ. So that's his pleasure, is to hurt Christ. And when a, when a couple is having problem, marital difficulties, and the marriage uh, brings the couple to be, you know, upset with each other, desire to separate from each other, that's uh, the pleasure of the enemy, but it hurts the, the, the heart of Christ. Christ uh, is sad to see family separating because uh, God created marriage to be a blessing for men and women, for the, their, their children. And when there are problems in the marriage, uh, the, these people, they become unhappy, they become sad. And it saddens the heart of Christ. So the enemy, he knows that. So he does whatever he can to hurt the, the heart of Christ by separating couples. But uh, it's really uh, important to understand that he has no power over our marriage once God is the center of our marriage. As I said before, the only way for a wedding to be in trouble is when Christ is not the center anymore. In a moment of distraction, sometimes we may uh, lose sight of Jesus and not have him as the center of our marriage. And the Bible is very clear that marriage is a blessing. There in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 and 12, it says that it's better to uh, uh, be two than one, because if one falls, the other can help him to, to get up. But then it says that the threefold cord is not quickly broken. It, that what it means is there, a marriage might have trials, go through difficulties, as all couples, all families go through troubles and difficulties in life. But if Christ is the center, this tie of marriage will not be broken easily, quickly. No, God will perform the miracle necessary sometimes. It's, sometimes it takes a miracle to fix things in a marriage, in a family. But if he's the center, he'll perform the miracle. He has power to save in marriage. So keep it in mind. Uh, it's important to have God always as the center of the marriage. And if uh, for some reason your marriage is not going well, don't give up on it. Just work to make God the center of your marriage. And he's going to save your marriage. I have been counseling couples quite often, uh, couples that are facing some difficulties. And there was a case not long ago of a couple, they were already separated. The devil was destroying that marriage. But one of them, the one that was facing most uh, the spiritual difficulties in his life, uh, that was the husband, he decided to give it a try of making God the center of their of his life first. So he started reading the Bible more, he started reading the Spirit of Prophecy more, and God started working his life. And once the Lord started working his life, he was able to recover his wife as well, because he started making God the center of his life and of his marriage. So uh, if you are facing some difficulties, just make God the center of your marriage. And you are going to see the miracle happening in your life and in the life of your conjugates. So, uh, because there is a promise from God. He says, the promise he made to Abraham, that promise is for you and for me as well. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, he said, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So do you understand what God is promising here? He said, you know, I will bless thee and no one can curse you. 
because I I will bless you if you make if you make me the center of your life of your marriage I will be with you and I will bless you in such a way that uh, I will surround your marriage with uh, my protection and other families that will be in contact with your family with your marriage we will also be blessed so brethren that's something really wonderful what God is promising here. He's promising to give you a blessing in your marriage where he's going to surround and protect your marriage. And then he goes beyond and he says, and you know, it's going to be more than that. Other couples that will come in contact with you will also be blessed because you have made me the center of, of you, uh, your marriage. And as I said, I mentioned before, marriage is being attacked because it's an institution created by God to make women and men happy. And uh, the enemy doesn't want to see anyone happy because he's not happy. So he wants to destroy your happiness. But I want to tell you, marriage has subsisted for almost 6,000 years. And uh, it will continue subsisting because God, he was the one that created it. He's the one that blesses it. And the enemy has been trying to destroy marriage. But he will not destroy this institution. It will go until the end because God protects it. God blesses it. And he's willing to bless. Just let us make this, him the center of our marriage. And uh, he's going to protect it. There in Psalm 5 verse 12, God, he promises that he'll bless the home of the, of the righteous. He'll bless the righteous with favor. And he says, I will compass you as with a shield. So God will put a shield uh, protecting your marriage when you make him the center of your marriage. Now, Brandon, how to keep uh, God or to place God at the center of our marriage? We need to have time for God. Sometimes we are running too much in this world and we don't find time to spend with the Lord. And we need to find time. I, I have a, a saying that I always mention it. Uh, it's, I, I used to say that the person that lives without time for God, this person lives wasting time. It's a waste of time when we don't have time for God. You know, sometimes we are in such a hurry and things happen that hinders all our plans for that day. And if we had made God the center of our lives in that day, we would have saved the day. We would have saved sometimes the week. We would have saved the month. And uh, so if, to make God the center of your marriage, I have separated five, five points here that I want to leave with you. And that will be the closing of the message for today. And this will be the closing of our seminar, our series here, Seven Keys to a Happy Marriage. So the first thing to keep God, to place God at the center of our marriage, we need to make prayer part of our daily routine. So always remember, start the day with prayer, and remember during the day to be praying, talking to God. So we will pray for each other. I will pray for my wife. She prays for me. And uh, we will pray together. That's uh, the counsel number one I want to leave for us here. Make prayer the part of our daily routine and part of our marriage. Praying for each other and praying with each other. The second thing here is connect with prayer. The, when we talk about praying together. And uh, one of the moments most convenient for us to pray together as a couple is in the morning and the evening worship. I'm not going to be talking much here about how to do the morning and the evening worship. Every couple should adapt it according to their circumstance, uh, their possibilities. It does uh, the spirit process clearly. It doesn't need to be long moments of worship. We can have short moments. If you have more time someday, you spend more time. But if not, you spend just a few minutes pray, reading something together and praying together. So it's really important to have uh, evening and uh, morning and evening worship. This morning and evening worship is that moment we, when we put our marriage in God's hand, our day in God's hand, and then we come back at night at home and we thank God for shielding our marriage, for shielding our lives and bring us safely back home. So that's a special moment for us to pray together. So pray together with your spouse. You know, sometimes uh, some couples will, will, will feel well just uh, holding hands when they kneel down to pray and talk to the Lord. That's a very more special moment. It's a moment of intimacy uh, between us and God and between us and our spouse as well. When we come really close to the Lord together and put our lives, our marriage in His 
in his care, in his protect, asking for his protection. So, point number one: make prayer part of your daily routine. Pray for each other, and pray with each other. Connect with that. Don't neglect morning and evening worship. You are going to see what a difference it is going to make in your family, in your marriage. So the third uh, counsel I want to leave for us here is study your Bible. Read some and see, read some book of the spirit of prophecy. Read your Bible. Make it a purpose to read a little bit of your Bible every day. Three chapters a day doesn't take much time. And in one year, you finish reading the whole Bible. So read your Bible. Study your Bible. And study the Sabbath Bible lesson. Don't neglect it. And uh, make plans to read uh, one book of the Spirit of Prophets together uh, very often. You know, but read together so you two can talk about it. When, you, when the couple is reading the Bible through one year, three chapters every day, they always find some things to, to talk about the Bible. And if you are reading a book from the Spirit of, Prof, of Prophets together, you all, always will find some things interesting you want to share with the, other, with the other, ask if the other knows, ask the opinion of the other, and it brings us closer to each other as well. So if you are new in the faith, if you have not been used to reading the Spirit of Prophets, I always advise uh, people counsel people to start with some of the easiest books to read. Steps to Christ is a very easy book to read and to understand it. Uh, Adventist Home is very important for couples. Uh, child guidance for those that have or plan to have children. Uh, there is a Desire of Ages. It's a delight to read that book together as a couple. It's really nice. And then from there you can go to books that take a little bit more time. It's a little bit more uh, complicated to understand, like great controversy, lots of history, some prophecies there. But it's uh, once you get used to it, you enjoy reading anything from the Spirit of Prophecy. Testimonies for the Church is another uh, series of books uh, that is very important for families to, to read together. So you don't need to read much if you are going to read together during the morning or evening worship or if you are going to read separated in your job, you can, you know, also, or whatever you, you are during the day, you can uh, make an agreement between you two, what pages you are going to try to read that day, do whatever you can, but just study your Bible and read some book of the Spirit of Prophets quite often. So it will be a blessing for your marriage. That's one way of placing God at the center of your marriage. Uh, counsel number four. Attend church services as much as you can. Don't neglect going to prayer meeting, uh, participate of the church events, be it online if you cannot go to church as we are doing it here, but attend the church events. It's going to feed you and feed your spouse. So make plans to attend it when possible, attend together. If it's not possible to be together, whatever you may be and your spouse is, that's a moment you two will know you are doing the same thing there together if you are watching something online. And if you can go to church, go to church. If you have a local church that you can, you can attend, just go and attend church. It's a blessing for all those that participate. And your presence there, for sure, just your presence will make a difference in the life of someone. So that's the fourth uh, counsel. Attend church service when possible together. And uh, the fifth and the last uh, counsel I'll leave here for us. It's something you might not have thought about, but if you want to place God at, God at the center of your marriage, also hold church offices. You know, what I mean is when you are offered an office in the church, don't reject it. it no, it's never easy for anyone to do volunteer work for the church. Uh, so, so sometimes people find themselves too busy to hold church offices, but it's worth it doing. There's a text in the Spirit of Prophecy, uh, our high calling, page 196, that says, When we devote ourselves to the affairs of the kingdom of God, he will mind our affairs. Do you understand what God is saying here? He's saying, you know, if you work in my business, I'll take care of your business. If you take care of what I ask you to do in the church through my servants, through the bread in the church, I will take care of your needs, of your business as well. So this fifth counsel here is, in other words, get busy in the kingdom of God. 
uh, accept church offices when the brethren give you. Find something that you can do that will not hinder your, your time with your firm, that you can do together as a couple. And, uh, you know, there are some offices in the church that are really important, like family department, and you can do it as a couple, the two of you. And you can take some time during the weekend, whatever you have the time, to visit other families, pray with them, and you are going to be working together in the service, in the kingdom of God, advancing the cause of God. So reminding, just... Uh, uh, remind ourselves of the five uh, points here. Make prayer part of your daily routine. Pray together. Pray for each other. Evening and morning worship is the second advice. The third, study your Bible and read the, the spiritual prophecy and do it together as much as you you, you can. Uh, when I say together, it doesn't mean you have to be reading the book all together there, but each one can read in their time and then you can talk about it. The fourth one, attend church services as much as you can. And the fifth one, hold church offices. Work for God. Work together for the kingdom of God. Get busy in the kingdom of God. So, brethren, I pray that this advice here may stay in your minds and we may practice it in our daily life and be a blessing for each other in your marriage. And may the Lord bless your marriage, bless your family, and may you always make the Lord the center of your marriage. And you are going to have that happy marriage that God wants you to have. So may God be with you and with your loved ones. I want to pray with you before we close this series today here. I want to pray for your marriage and for your family. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to be here once again today. Thank you for the series you have sent us. Bless the souls that have watched it, those that will be watching it. May you guide them, protect them. Bless the marriages, Lord, that are facing trials. May you uh, help them and perform the miracle they may need. Bless those that are not having problems, that they may continue making each other happy, and they may practice what we have learned together here to glorify the name and to be a blessing for each other. Father, more than all, we ask you to save us for thy kingdom. We don't deserve anything, but we put ourselves in thy hands and ask these blessings in the name of Jesus. Amen. So thank you, Brian, once again for being here today and for being with us during all this time here uh, of this series. I have seen here many comments here, many Brian. I am not being able to read them here right now, but I see they have arrived here. I can see some names here. Uh, Brother Carlos Saul, thank you for joining us here. Uh, Brother Diego Moreno, Steve Fay, yeah, thank you for joining us here. Uh, brother, oh, Tiago Nascimento, God bless, uh, cousin, may the Lord be with you, and it's nice to see you here. Uh, Duce, Armindo, uh, Obalito, Obalido, Vital, Vidal, thank you, Elisto Bark, brother Elisto, God bless you and your family, brother George Mina, God bless you and your family as well, brother Paul Cambani, thank you, brother Paul, for joining us here, and, uh, uh, thank you all, Brother Coronado, Victor, also Sister Tammy, and C Sister Cecilia, Sister Veronica. Thank you all for joining us here today. May God be with all of you. Uh, Amatista Perez, thank you, Sister, for joining us. And all of you here, there are other brethren. I'll be praying for all of you and for your marriage and for your family as well. May the Lord be with you, with you and by God's grace, we will plan to be here back for our prayer meetings. Uh, next month, if the Lord so allows. God bless, and I'll pray, be praying for you, and please keep praying for me as well.